or 40 Wall Street. I never felt that uh, these statements would be taken very seriously because you open it up and right at the beginning of the statement you read a page and a half of, of stuff saying go get your own accounting, go get your own this, go get your own that. It's a compilation, it's a fairly good compilation of uh, properties, but when you open it up, the first thing you see and the first thing you read is this clause that goes on to tell you that, that you shouldn't rely on the statement. But if something's much more valuable now, then the number that, that I have down here is a low number. That's much more accurate than an appraisal done in 2014, or even a guesstimate done in 2014. Are you saying that these numbers are guesstimates? Well, Object to the form. I don't think that's what he it, said at all. It is a, uh, the word guesstimate is a compilation of knowledge and all sorts of things put together because ultimately, I can't tell you what the property is going to be worth, and nobody can. Appraisers are right and they're wrong. I mean, no, everybody knows that. You have a disclaimer clause that everything we're saying, you're supposed to go out and get your own appraisal, you're supposed to do, you're supposed to pay no credence to what we say whatsoever. That's why it's very unfair. The banks, the banks are shocked by this case. That's my opinion. Because they've never had anything like this. Do you know the banks were fully paid? Do you know the banks made a lot of money? Do you know I don't believe I ever got even a default notice? And even during COVID, the banks were all paid. And yet you're suing on behalf of banks, I guess. Uh, it's crazy. The whole case is crazy. Chris, we're going to be here until midnight if your client answers every question with an eight-minute speech. So let's get down to business. You said the numbers were very wrong in the sense of I defrauded banks by using them. Even though the banks were fully paid, and had no complaints, and to this day have no complaints, right? You sued me. What you did is a terrible thing. How's the building doing today? Good. It's, it's right here. You like to see it? I don't it's think right we're there. allowed to open the windows. Open the curtain. No. Open the curtain. Go ahead. It's right here. I just looked out the window. Same um, it's not. Can you open it? No. it I wouldn't. <laughs> Do you know why you had the brand value? I think I was just curious to see what it would be. Um, I look at Coca-Cola, I look at these public companies, and they have tremendous values in their brand. Uh, as I explained before, more than they have in their brick and mortar and their trucks and all of the other stuff in some cases. And I was just curious as to what it might be. But I felt I wanted to be a legitimate uh, president. I didn't have to be from the standpoint of even using the word legitimate, I think it's important that you, if you're running the country, you're not doing business. But there was no legal reason that I understood that you had to. But I thought it would be a good thing to have a trust. Why did you select Mr. Weisselberg to serve as a trustee? He was with me for a long time. He was uh, liked. He was respected. Uh, now he's gone through hell and back. What's happened to him is very sad. Uh, but he was a very respected person, uh, been with me a long time. It just sounded, seemed like the right choice. So you were too busy for the company? In a way, Direct yeah. To the form. Yeah, I think you could say it. It's another way of saying it. I was very busy. I was, I considered this the most important job in the world, saving millions of lives. I think you would have had nuclear holocaust if I didn't deal with North Korea. I think you would have had a nuclear war if I were an elected. And I think you might have a nuclear war now, if you want to know the truth. I believe that Seven Springs could be that if New York would ever get its act together, which is a big if, because I just don't know that they will. They, they spend all their time investigating me instead of stopping violent crime in the streets. If you take Doral, I think Doral could be worth two and a half billion by itself. Uh, I probably my most valuable asset I didn't even include on your statement, and that's the brand. I didn't even include that. Uh, the brand, if I wanted to uh, create a statement that was 
high, I would have put the brand on. We had a value from the number one predictive, uh, from the number one branding person at the time, uh, 2.9 or $3 billion. And that was years ago. That was back in 2000 and something. And now the brand is worth much more. If you look, I mean, I became president because of the brand. Okay? I became president. Uh, I think it's the hottest brand in the world. If I wanted to uh, show you a good statement, I would have added maybe $10 billion or something for the brand. I didn't put the brand in there. I, I know you feel the need to explain this, but... Um, I don't want to explain we'll, it to you because you don't have a case and you should drop this case. And it's a shame that somebody that's done such a good job, the convention center in New York, so many things I did for this city, the job on the west side of Manhattan, thousands of people employed, and now I have to come and justify myself to you? I have to come after doing all of that and paid massive taxes, state taxes and city taxes, and now I have to come in here and justify myself and have crowds of people waiting on the street, it's a disgrace.